Okay, this is Amy and this is the trimming demo. It's also called footing. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a work that you've made and you are letting it dry so the top part here isn't fully dry but it's firm and then you're turning it over so you can create this foot. So this is a ring foot. Um, that's the most basic foot that you can put on a piece. Um, in the room and in books you can find other type of trimming um, techniques you can use or different styles of foot, but this is the basic one that we use in ceramics one and two. So first of all, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, that I've bagged up my work and I keep mine in a plastic box and I double bag it, um, but putting it on a bat and keeping it bagged up is fine. So I have these two pieces um, and I'm going to pull this one out and you can see it's firmed up enough so it's holding its form. It's not quite leather hard. You can still trim when it's leather hard. So I'm gonna set this down because that's the one I'm gonna work on and then I'm gonna do this one later. So I'm gonna go put this in a safe place. And now I'm ready to set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to carefully turn over my bowl very carefully um, when I hold the bowl on the inside, I usually cut my fingers like this and I bend them and hold it. What you're going to do is take a finger or a sponge and just smooth over the rough edge because it makes it a lot easier when you're trimming. So um, let's just do that a little bit more. It's pretty soft. Usually I let mine uh, sit a little bit longer, but that's okay. All right, so it's that's pretty good. I could also take a sponge if I wanted to. So for trimming in this class, uh, you can trim right on the metal. Uh, there are rings on the metal that help you to see uh, how uh, balanced your work is. So what I do is I take my work and I carefully set it down, finding the rings, and then just very gently uh, move it so it's equal. And I can see, and if you need to measure it, measure it. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. You can also look right over it and you can look down on it to see if it's equal and even. Okay, uh, if your piece is larger, you can take the pins out. We also have some bats you can put down and you can trim on those. And then at this point, if you want to, you can smooth this over one more time as you look down on it. Then you're going to get some clay and you're going to attach clay to the sides. Make sure you use the same clay that you threw with. Um, I threw with an Alpine white. I'm going to get out some clay pieces here. In the OneNote, there's lots of other people uh, trimming videos you can watch, other people doing it different ways. This is just one way. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can do it. I use a special grip at home because it's a lot easier. I think we have a few of those at school, but the really nice ones are quite expensive. So. Here we go. So take a ball of clay, roll it in a ball, and then you can use used clay for this. You don't have to use fresh clay. You make these. You can make them as large as you really want. Um, if your clay is super soft here, you want to be careful because if you use this, uh, do this method, you could push in your clay. Uh, mine's a little bit wet. Sometimes I put a little bit of wet on here, and then um, what you're going to do is you're going to attach it down and in just a little bit. Okay, and then it looks like I need another thing of clay. You want to do them at the same time, or try to at least. And just know that your work's not going to be perfect, okay? Um, I'm going to move this a little bit. Nothing's ever perfect, so just get over it, you know? It's not going to be, and if you're just beginning with pottery, it takes a while to, to figure all this out. It's okay. That one moved in just a little, but I think you'll get the idea. Okay, let's talk about the tools. So this is a, a trimming tool. It's like a half moon tool. I use these a lot in my studio. And then we have uh, teeny tiny little ones for details for trimming or footing. And then we have these. These are the ones that most students use when they're trimming. Um, I like to start with the larger ones and then I move to the smaller ones. So I'm set this over here. So I'm just going to start with what most students use. I'm going to start with this one. So here we go. Let's get started. Um, make sure your trays are on. 
uh, it's going to catch a lot of the crumbs. If you want to, we have these plastic things you can put all the way around that fit in the wheel. They're just, or, or a piece of cardboard that, like a bendable cardboard, and it catches all the crumbs. Um, same with throwing. If you're right-handed, it's going to go counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, it will go the other direction. So the first thing I do is I kind of smooth it over with my fingers, um, and then I like to find the center. That's pretty even. So uh, when you're thinking of the technique for this, I'm going to move my camera a little bit. There we go. Uh, your chin can be over the middle, but I'm going to lean back a little so you can see my work. So elbows on your legs and you're leaning over. You want to hold the tool right in the middle and you're just going to find the center. So there we go, found the center. Um, and then I'm going to put my foot right here. So I'm going to find the inside of the foot. I like to mark it out first. Some students do it with a needle tool, you can. This is the inside of the foot here. This is going to be the outside of the foot right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear off everything from here to the middle and everything from here to the outside. So you don't want it to go full speed. You want to take your time. Let's go ahead and start. It, the, the wetter the clay, the more it's going to pull. So you're going to have to just adjust your speed. And then just kind of fling them off. If they're really wet, they'll stick. Um, you need to know how thick your foot is. So my, not the foot, sorry, the base. I think my base is about this big. I should have measured it first, but uh, what you can do is when it's damp, just have a good idea of what it is. But you can also hold your work like this, one finger inside, one finger outside, and you can get a good measurement. Sometimes you can do it this way. Like I know that this is pretty thin. It's about like that because I footed it quite far. Um, if it's super thick, you, then you can go deeper. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear out from the outside to the middle. You don't want it to grab and move around. You also want to just keep it going. Okay, so I could do that some more if I wanted to. And then um, I'm going to show you how to use the trimming tool. If you wanted to, you could also take a little bit off the outside just so you can see the foot. I like to do that so I can see what I'm doing and where I'm trying to remove. So that's using this tool. Uh, this is a ribbon tool. It's also called a loop tool. Uh, you can use any shape you like. And then, of course, if you want like a really sharp foot, you can use this. You can really dig in with this one. You can really see it there. All right, I'm going to show you how to use the trimming tool, okay? So this one has a little hook at the end. Be careful you don't cut yourself. Uh, remember, if you're right-handed, you're, you're trimming in this space right here from 3 o'clock on an analog clock to 6 o'clock. But if you're right-handed, you're trimming here in this space here, okay? So basically, right-handed is this, left-handed is this. Uh, as the clay is spinning, you want to catch it on the upswing. Okay, so to use this trimming tool, there's lots of different techniques for this. This is just one of many. This is nice because it pulls the clay up instead of it falling down. That's what I like. Um, you can also dig into it to undercut a foot. I like to use this one, but it's up to you. And then I can redo uh, this outside here so I can find the foot a little bit more. And then you could use this side to clear it off. You could use this side. It's really up to you. It's pretty versatile. Most people will be using the loop tool though, so I'll just use this. Oops. If your clay is soft enough, you can use your fingers to kind of mold it a little bit. It's up to you how you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way. 
I guess the wrong way would be not to fit it, and then you have this huge thing on the bottom, and it's just like a big, huge amount of clay, and then when you let your clay dry too fast, it's going to crack. So it's really important that you foot something, and it makes it really nice. Um, let's get this tool again. So my, my wheel looks like it's going a lot faster in the video than it actually is. My foot pedal is about a quarter of the way down, so it's really not that far down. So hopefully you get the basic idea of trimming. I love these, these trimming tools. They're really nice. I like to undercut my foot a little bit underneath. So what's revealed is the body and the shape. You can really shape it here. Like if it's kind of flat and it looks weird, you can really bring out the shape of a work. Um, for this one, you can see that, that I've got this curve here. I could have gone in even more to, to really undercut. We call it undercutting, okay? At least that's what I call it. Let me show you how to use the small tools. A lot of you will like these because you can get in and get some really nice details. Take your time. This is quite satisfying for a lot of people. They like to trim. And if you have a hard time with trimming and it's not your thing and there's somebody else in the class who can help you with trimming, just work together. Just maybe you make the work and then they trim some. That's okay. You can put both your names on the work if you want. Or you can have somebody who's your your trimming partner, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay now let's, it's also okay to stop it and do that. If you notice, I just moved my finger on there and I dented it in. Don't stress about it, just push it down again. It's okay, that happens. Use your fingers, use your fingernails. And then there's also these little teeny ones and you can use these tiny tools to get like a perfect angle. You can use them this direction to clean off little tiny areas that you might not be able to reach with other tools. All right, so I'm going to finish this up. Yes, you can go all the way towards the top with the tools if you really like to. It's fine. You can even something out that's not very even. But it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. If it's uneven, it's just handmade. Sometimes I go all the way to the top if I want to. That looks okay. It's coming along. The one thing that I like to do at the very end is I like to smooth over my clay. I also sometimes use my fingernail like this and it compresses it just a little bit. I like to do that, but you don't have to. It also smooths out any grog that you might have. And of course the grog makes it a little sandy looking, a little bit rough in places. And that really smooths it out a lot. Um, I also cut my fingernails really short when I'm trimming and throwing. That helps too if you've got really long fingernails. It's super tough to throw. It doesn't really work very well. Okay, so one thing I like to do is I like to bring my foot around. Um, I think I'll use this one here. Uh, well, actually, I like this one. So I want to undercut my foot a little. Of course, you don't have to do this. It's your choice. And then I'm going to round it over. And your style is your choice. I used to have very sharp, flat foot, like feet on my pots. And then a couple years ago, I switched. So now I try to round them over rather than have a sharp, Edge. I liked the sharp edge for a while, and it was just part of this design that I used to do. But if I want that again, I can leave it. But I like to round them and make them as smooth as I can. Also, if you um, if you round your feet here, it's easier for uh, waxing the bottom. I'm just going to very carefully round that over. 
There we go. Okay. So now I'm at the point where I'm going to get the crumbs off. Try not to press too hard or the crumbs will stick. You can use this tool to get some of them off. This works really well. Okay. Um, and then at the very last, I squeeze all the water out of the sponge, like squeeze it all out into your container. And for when I'm trimming, I only use a tiny little container of water. And then I just go over just a little bit to get some of the crumbs off and to smooth it over, or you can just use your finger. At this point, if you want to stamp anything in the bottom, this is the time to do it. For example, if you have like a signature stamp that you've made or you want to draw your name in, then you can do that. This is a good time for that. Some people don't put their name on their work and they actually use oxides to write their name. I used to do that. I might start doing that again. I also like to use my fingernail to make it look like it's, you know, handmade rather than machine made. And any little crumbs that you want to get off, your fingernail works really great for that. All right, so we're almost done with the foot. I'm going to stop the wheel so you can see. It's getting there. I would definitely, I'm going to take a little bit more off the side here, but I think you get the basic idea. Um, I do see one little part I don't like there, and it's like a little thing in the clay. I'll get rid of that. And then you want to put your name on your work. So. Um, what I tell students uh, is, especially beginning potters, just use a pencil. That's the best thing to write your name in clay. Uh, we have some nib tools. You can use those. I don't, I don't use a needle tool. It rips the clay. It doesn't look good. So, by the wheels, we've got a bunch of pencils. You can grab a pencil, and you can just write your name in there. I'm going to put my name in here. I usually put like the year 22 and after that dries I'll be able to take these little nibs of clay off there I usually just let it dry and do that so that's trimming if you have questions um, as you're working there's a poster on the wall that has trimming steps you can always watch this video over and over and there's other videos in the OneNote um, all right so I'm gonna finish uh, trimming this up and if you're done you can stop the video now and if you want to keep watching you can keep watching okay thank you